Should I say it? Should I, should mm. I mention that we're in the Volkswagen? Oh, you had to go the there. Volkswagen, oh. ID4. The Volkswagen ID4. The Volkswagen. You're watching Everyday Driver. We make a TV show, podcast, and YouTube channels dedicated to great cars, driving adventures, and helping you find a car you'll love. Subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a thing. Fresh on its newly wor new worldwide Dieselgate apology tour comes the second electric car Volkswagen's ever built. And the first one in the U.S. And like, the first one in the yeah. U.S., but they have said the motor's in the rear like the rear-wheel drive Volkswagen Beetle, the original Beetle. That's in the marketing materials. Yeah, that it's like the Beetle because it's rear engine, rear drive. No. Uh-huh. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. Let it go. Stop yeah. trying to do some sort of legacy thing. It's fresh and new. Yeah. Let it be fresh and new. That's good. Don't that's try to excellent. tie it You're to right. the past. You're right. That's not where we're going. And that's where Volkswagen needs to go. Yeah. So it is the ID4. It is Volkswagen's brand new five passenger, fully electric, all electric SUV. And unlike things like an e-Golf, this is not, we made this car and now we made an electric version. This is a from the ground yes. up electric. Well, people have been coming up to us and saying, well, what is that? Yeah, I haven't seen that. Absolutely. Well, that's have. not a yep. Tesla. It, yep. it can't possibly be any good. And, well, <laughs> let me tell you. Well, Tesla's dragged the entire rest of the automotive world into making. <laughs> dragged. Dragged. And absolutely dragged oh, all of the yeah. automotive world into making all electric cars. So here is Volkswagen's. I, it is the ongoing Dieselgate apology tour. Seriously. But here it is, all electric. It works also, speaking of the apology tour, with Volkswagen's Energize America. Or electrify, yes, America, electrify or America, electrify America thing that they, they are have almost to do what Tesla does entirely funding to try to make a series of well charging stations to get your electric car charged. The problem is they're not everywhere. Don't you think there and should they're be hard a, to find. an apology to her T-shirt like the eighties yes, hair bands? Be. Yes. All you the know, cities we all visited. The cities on yes. the back and like the map on the front and Volkswagen CEO going yeah, on the front of your shirt, <laughs> like splashed over in huge graphics. And now it needs to say Volkswagen on the back. Oh, gosh. The apology tour. They actually yeah. did that. Mm, they did. But here it is. What I like about this is it's freed Volkswagen up to do some fresh thinking. Mm. And you can see that evident in how the car moves how you interact with it to make yeah, it do yeah. the things you want it to do mm -hmm. from the screen to the interface everything feels kind of new and fresh and i like that volkswagen is sort of finding their voice here they're finding mm -hmm. their way mm -hmm. they are kind of a brand new company after dieselgate they have to <laughs> think fresh they have to do things differently yeah, they do even though they're a real car company and the good news is this is a real car mm -hmm. because of the build quality yes. it does feel german it yes. feels so precision over engineered mm -hmm. do things really need to fit well yeah they do need to fit that well and they feel <laughs> solid and good it's very it well put it feels like a worthy investment at forty three thousand nine hundred dollars this is the first edition which means rear wheel drive and about a 250 270 mile range that's what we're talking about that's here. what they hope but what's been interesting is every time we've charged this it's only charged to 80% battery yeah. because yeah. its default is 80% battery to protect the longevity of the battery by not constantly charging it to 100% and then depleting it. Yep. You can press special buttons and hold your mouth right and make it do 100%, <laughs> but it really charges to 80%, which is about a 200 mile range, which has been decent. Yep. What I find yep. interesting is this is 200 horsepower, roughly. I know the horsepower Two, is not a direct comparison. Yeah, it doesn't really relate. But uh, this is less horsepower than its primary competitors mm -hmm. in the Mach-E and the Tesla Model Y. Yep, yep. And I find it interesting. This is the first electric car I've driven where it feels quick, but I'm not like, whoa, that's fast. Does it need to be, whoa, that's fast? It doesn't, but that's what it is. It's the first time I've driven an electric car that didn't have that sensation. Yeah. There. It's perfectly fine, the and it's going to be better. The Bolt had that. The, the Bolt still had a little bit. The it Bolt did. was still surprising. This yeah. is just good. It just moves. It's just good. And it has, yeah. of course, that instant torque. And so it's going to be every bit as fast and quick as any hatchback you've ever had for commuting. This is your commute pod. Down to, by the way, these sci-fi whirring noises. The noises. Yeah. It sounds like a landing escape pod when you get going slow. It's got such I don't really know a whistling like, word. I'll, I'll believe all you. All the ones that I've been in. I will yeah, believe you. When the aliens picked me up, they had <laughs> just, a landing escape pod. We'll it sounded just like this. That's, yes. where, that's where Volkswagen got I'm the idea. Going I guarantee with you. Yes. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, for sure. Well, here's the thing about this rear wheel drive. 
It will eventually come with an all-wheel drive, mm -hmm. but it rides fine. It yep. rides yep. like any other SUV, gas-powered SUV. Mm -hmm. As a passenger, I like riding here. Things are quieter. Mm -hmm. It's kind of nice. I, I don't mind anything about it, yep. but that's just it. There's not really a standout thing about this because all future electric cars will have an architecture like this. The battery's in the floor between the axles. So therefore, I think both of us are concerned about all future electric cars just having the architecture just like this. It's essentially you're concerned about it too. It's an oversized hatchback with batteries in the floor and they all have yeah. just kind of yeah. an incessant sameness. They all feel That's slightly different than each other, yeah. which, which lays us down at what Volkswagen's had to do here, that is their interface. They've had to make an all new interface completely yep. for this car. And honestly, by and large, I think it's pretty impressive. It's laggy, but it's pretty impressive. The interface <laughs> itself is really cool and they've done some great stuff. It's just not quick and it should right. be quick. Especially in the mornings when it's cold. The yes. electronics just, they're sleeping. The whole like, car is like, why did you wake me? Can I have some coffee? The whole thing is that way, yep. Yeah, the, the screen has gone black on me. Yes, me too. It did. Me too. Yep. Well, that's not a good thing. Not a good thing. Reset itself. Did I didn't it, have to reset the car. It did reset itself. I was pushing the power button thinking, okay, let's have it. It's fine now. Yep. So, space utilization. The back seat is good. It is good. The ability for both of us to be comfortable back there is good. Mm -hmm. The headspace, the knee space, quite yep. good. This is really good space. It's a really good size. But that's just it. The differentiator is the space in the car and the styling. Mm -hmm. Because if they all drive the same and they all kind of have a <laughs> right. kind of sameness and, and interface and we're all good at figuring out interfaces by now and it's all cup holders, got to have cup holders and a cubby. What is the differentiator? Yeah, It's the badge and it's styling. Mm. That's what it comes down to. I'm also surprised by the fact that this, while an electric car, while really leaning into how sci-fi can I be, doesn't have full-on one-pedal driving. Every electric it car we've driven. Does. Here's the thing: when I've you're got doing it on it right now. B, which is brake mode, which gives you yeah. more brake regen. And yeah. if I take my foot off the accelerator, whatever we're calling that now, it will. I won't do it here, but it will slow down with brake regen, but not very aggressively. And it'll only get to walking pace, three or four miles an hour, and yeah. then it will go indefinitely. It, you can't come to a stop and do true one pedal driving. I'm not saying you have you to, to interact with the car. I guess it wants me to press the pause button. That's right. Yeah. The, the throttle pedal has a play button. The brake pedal has a pause button. I'm just going to say it. The throttle pedal should be play pause and the brake should be stop. This but, is what happens yeah. when Germans are told they can have fun. <laughs> <laughs> the engineering team can, oh, we can have fun. Look out. Fun's a play being and a pause had. button? Fun's really? being had. <laughs> That's as far as we went? You got to have fun today? You had fun? I want to have fun. If Come over and case. make a play pause button. It's going to be great. If that's the case, then pushing the play button means the world does stuff and you, you're moving into the world. Pause. Nope. What? They're so excited about the sci-fi feel of this. I'd be curious to see this interior with something other than a white accent. Because I think it yeah. might calm it down a yeah. bit and make it a little more normal. Like a tan, like a caramel or something kind of accent. Something, Oatmeal. Something other than just Anything. stark white. Because yeah. everything about this driving experience is very sterile. And yeah. it works. Uh, if yeah. you're driving in a cityscape, if you're driving in stop and go, it, everything it needs to do, it does. It's just there's no personality here. And then you put on top of that this sci-fi feel of the whirring and the hyper white and the, that kind of stuff. And I feel like I'm in some post-apocalyptic sci-fi film. I just want to drive. I just want to have a car that's kind of fun. <laughs> what I don't understand is the color and trim design team deciding that white in an SUV that you know is going to have kids eating yep. cheese dibbles. Oh, yes. And get their cheesy hot Cheeto dust and yep. sticky sco soda and goo. <laughs> Goo. All over everything. Kids come pre-packaged with goo. There's and then they just release goo for kid the first goo few minutes. Yep. On the white. Yep. Everywhere. And wipe your mouth and oh, you yeah, know what's sure. happening. Well, apparently every customer wanted a gigantic glass roof in apparently. everything. Yes. So we've got the oven door above us. This which, one at least does have a cover. Yeah, it does. I can't wait for these to be sold in, I don't know, Arizona. Yeah, exactly. Welcome to Phoenix. Like, sizzle. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure that's going to go over too well. Okay, I'm going to whir my way over to a turnaround spot. 
Uh-huh. Seriously, I'm waiting for lasers to come out. I mean, they, they were very excited about the sci-fi feel of this thing when they built it. <laughs> well, it's it's something new and fresh and different, it's, right? It's different. I'll give it that. Yeah. I'm going to push the park button. This yeah. does have that thing where you don't have to turn it on. What's funny is they do have a start-stop on the Thank console you. If, a... you, if you feel like you need to. But you can also just get in and drive and forget about that. That is a, you can. That is a, the lack of decision-making is what that is. Let's give all the options. That's teams being like, you all won. You're all pretty. <laughs> we'll have a start <laughs> button and you can drive without it. That'll be fun. If you're going to redesign a car and it's a new powertrain you've never built before and it's a clean slate... Why would you put the power button where the traditional key goes? Why not reinvent the entire experience? You're kind mm-hmm. of doing it already because, yeah, to your point, you just get in and you go. Well, that's the thing. The fact that Why you do don't that? have to use it at all and you can just get in or when you're done, you can just leave, that makes that part baffling. Because if I press yeah. it, it just tells me I'm ready to go. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't, it doesn't start up at all. Like the, the Mustang Mach-E starts when you hit that button. Yep. This, it's exactly. just like, it, which means there's like wiring and stuff for the ECU in there that's not necessary. We this could, is Volkswagen. It could, have been, it could have been 43,000, period, versus almost 44 if we'd taken out the start button. I'm just saying. This is Volkswagen over-engineering everything. Well, it continues. Uh, to that point, why are the buttons on the steering wheel haptic? What was wrong with buttons? Volkswagen had perfectly good buttons that work there. It's the future. It's the future. It's hapticness. Oh, look. It's rumbling at me like a game controller. Oh, good. Yeah. I can't wait to drive. So glad it's white. It has to be white. white. It's the future where there is no color. That's right. To put it in gear, you twist this funny-looking knob forward. You can do brake mode again, but usually you can just leave it and drive. Okay? There's a, a digital, what do I want to say, just a beam across the windshield. Light bar, yeah. Yeah, the light bar that is LED that changes colors and does different things. To kind of, That's how the car talks back to you. It's kind of Hal. No. It's kind of Hal talking to you. Because it, it comes different colors. If you have the nav screen on, it actually will illuminate in the direction of where your next turn is. That's actually kind of helpful. Well, yeah, and when you're charging, it's also a long status bar that shows you how much charge. How much are we filling? Yeah. All right. So see, that's fast, but it's, it's not fast. like... That's floorboarded. Wow, electric car. My play button is floorboarded. You, you've you've With, pushed the play button as hard as you can. I can. It just won't play anymore. I'm going to just pause gently, pause down to the speed limit. Oh, <laughs> I need to get out. <laughs> play pause. Really? Every electric car has regenerative braking. Yes. Right? This one, in particular, uses drum brakes in the rear. That's right. That's right. An invention from the year 1900. (laughs) It's on your brand new thing. Yes. (laughs) It's on your brand new high-tech electric car. So when you go to get new brakes, you're going to need brake shoes. Remember those? (laughs) You probably don't. Drum brakes. Drum brakes on the rear. And Volkswagen tells everyone that disc brakes aren't as effective after periods of disuse. Why why doesn't Tesla know this or Ford or everyone else? Why doesn't Ferrari, whose cars only get used occasionally, know that disc brakes are a problem? We just put drum brakes. You guys we just put using drum brakes on. Anyway. You're not using them, so oh. we just put drum brakes on. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's problematic. So yes, drum brakes in the rear, and they're fine. It's not like you're going to be tracking this thing. But no. Disc brakes are demonstrably more effective in braking power than drum brakes. Well, I just. But when you drive in <laughs> brake mode and you take your foot off, you're never going to need them. And who yeah. cares? Well, it, let's be honest. What that? What's behind that is straight up cost saving. Yep. It's just cost savings. We already found you cost savings. Yeah, I know. Here, Take but, out the, you know, the button whatever. there and you'd have cost savings. But it is hysterical, to your point, that we have technology from the dawn of cars. 1900. In the very latest. Drum brakes were first They've been completely used merged. In 1900. Well, the suspension is pretty comfortable. Feels like pretty much every SUV this size. It's well tuned. It actually absorbs bumps yeah. very well. Yes. It is. The seats are good. The space is good. On a road trip like this, yeah, you're hearing more wind noise than you otherwise would, but you have an engine. It's because you don't it. have other things that, that cover it up. That's yeah, the reality of exactly it. Exactly right. Now we have aerodynamicists at car companies worried about wind noise and other like road noise and things at a level they've never had to before because the engine used to yeah. cover stuff up. 
Yeah, <laughs> now they've got to figure out how to deal with all the actual other noises that a car makes. I mean, mirrors make a ton of wind noise, no yeah. matter what you do, and yep. so do tires. And they you're going to hear all of that now. I mean, that's not in this car, that's all electric cars. Oh, we've got armrests. You we do have armrests, armrest. yes. Let's do this. I want to get a little bit more comfortable. There I mean, this go. is. This does not Perfect. feel like a first attempt. This is far beyond a, we tried this out. This is executed is. at a very oh, that's, high that's a level. Point. It's just, it's bland. And, yeah. I, and I fear that they're all going to be. Not Volkswagen, just this idea of a five-seat CUV okay. with batteries in the floor and one pedal driving is all just kind of kind of feel like these pods we're all worried about. Frankly, it already feels like one. It sounds like one. It sounds like the yeah. whirring pod. Yeah. From a road trip standpoint, this right here feels like any other SUV. You're right. It feels like everything You're else. Right. Yep. That's actually a good thing I agree. because it's not so weird and quirky and uncomfortable that no. it, it's not a consideration. But you're right. As a first attempt, this feels very refined, and the lines on this car, the styling, it looks good. Mm -hmm. I like it. Yeah. Don't hear that we don't like this. I think we both do like it. It's just not a standout. Yeah. I mean, I like it because I like cars, and I like that this is proliferating Volkswagen's new diesel gate. Volkswagen no, has done a good is. job. What they've done is they've created a middle of the road five seat electric on their first try. Yep. It's not bad. It's not, wow, have you driven this yet? Right. The biggest strike against this is actually charge network. Yeah. I think the Electrify against America anything. thing, yes, anything. I think Electrify yeah. America thing isn't prol proliferated enough. Mm -hmm. It's not enough places. It isn't easy enough to find. It's not easy enough to work with. We need yeah. to get to a place where you can just pull up, plug in, sit down. I mean, you had to like do the proper dance to get the status bar for the charging every time you dealt with this thing. You <laughs> but did. You're so rewarded when you do. Then it's you get the charge rewarding. update. Hal says, "Thank you, Dave," and off we go. <laughs> it's frightening, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> Once they have the charging solved, this can be legitimate. But right now, mm -hmm. I think it, the, the the dichotomy right now with electric cars is the best possible tool for an all urban environment. That is a big struggle to charge in the urban environment. Yeah. That, that the, these things should connect and they don't. I mean, if there were like inductive road surface charging, it's been toyed with. Come yeah. on. Yeah. What do you suppose would happen if I pushed park right now? I think it would say, I can't do that, Dave. Would it disintegrate? It, it would go red along it the bar on red. the windshield and say, I'm I can't so do that, Dave. Tempted. <laughs> I'm so tempted. Yeah, that's Did what happened with the press car. Or uh -huh. will it rip the guts out of the car? I doubt it. I think I think it become it becomes Hal at that point. And it will eject <laughs> us out of the spaceship. <laughs> like, yeah. you failed as drivers. Uh -huh. You're done. We're done. 